Hello, folks, and welcome back to a, another edition of Skep's Unnamed Deck Showcase. Despite my lack of interest in the game for the past couple of months, Salaman Great is apparently tiered again, and you already know that it's one of my favorite decks in Duel Links, so I had to come back to the game and see how it performs and prove once and for all that I am the Salaman Greatest. So here we are with the deck, and as you can see, the deck is basically unchanged from its dominant position at the start of the Vrains era. We're playing almost card for card the exact list as before, barring, of course, our three Trinity pieces for Salaman Great Circle now at the three spot. I think the selling point of this deck is its consistency, so while you can cut a copy of Circle for something like an Ice Dragon's Prison, I don't know if I would like to do that. Spoiler alert, this current build of the deck has always netted me a way to get Gazelle every single game. I don't. I think I've played like 20 or so games with this deck, and I've never not opened Gazelle. So I'm a big fan of uh, eight total copies of Gazelle, uh, nine actually. Uh, total copies of Gazelle, and I wouldn't recommend you change the consistency cards, but let's go over the card by card, and we'll talk a little bit about what I am playing and why I am playing it. Uh, first off, our singular copy of Gazelle, uh, still limit one, two Lady Debug, uh, the normal summon of the deck. Every other Salaman Great besides one is a one of, uh, including Gazelle, actually, so we're only playing one three of Salaman Great. Uh, one Jack Jaguar, no one's playing Deity Crow these days. One Salaman Great Foxy, niche normal summon, good for later turns. Uh, if you already have a stacked graveyard uh, and you have uh, a reset Salaman Great Circle off of Falco or... Uh, Sunlight Wolf, uh, you can search Foxy, Normal Summon Foxy, to dig for additional copies of uh, Foul or uh, Mirror. Um, we have one copy of Falco, of course. I think this is good. In uh, really good hands, you can return Gazelle uh, to your hand with Falco, and then uh, when you shuffle back a Salaman Great to summon Jack Jaguar, you can add a Foul back to your hands. So you have Foul plus Gazelle for your next turn. Um, and one copy of Mirror, just a really good extender. Uh, you can add it to your hand off debug to special summon it, add it to your hand off circle to special summon it. Uh, also, very interestingly, um, if you activate circle at the end of your turn, at the end of your opponent's turn, rather, you can add mirror to your hand, special summon mirror with its own effect. The turn will pass back to you. You can activate Falco in your graveyard, targeting Salaman Great Mirror, return it to your hand, which will trigger mirrors once return effect on your turn now, so you can summon it uh, to get two free link material on the field for just one activation of Salaman Great Circle. Lastly, for the monsters, we're playing three copies of Salaman Great Foul. I think this is the only one worth playing more than one of because it's the only one that summons itself from your hand for basically no cost. Every single other monster in your deck equals Salaman Great Bailing, so you will always have a way to get this out of your hand, barring something like a warning point on your debug. Uh, because even if they warning point any of your other Salaman Greats on normal summon, you will still summon Foul. Um, I think this is a fantastic card, and given this deck's uh, reliance on making Dweller turn one, I think having three copies of half of a level four, half of a rank four, rather, excuse me, um, is probably mandatory. I have never lost to drawing more than one foul, and in the games where I have drawn more than one, I have always used the second one as a discard fodder, so I can stun a back row and make my plays unimpeded without needing to go into Sunlight Wolf. Uh, because this deck has ways of getting lethal uh, that sort of require you to not make, uh, not Sunlight Wolf, make Heat Leo. So being able to stun back row without needing to shuffle it back is uh, very nice, and I do quite like 3 Foul, and I recommend you to try it out yourself. Uh, next up, uh, our requisite Garnet, Salaman Great Sanctuary. I would consider playing more than 20 cards just to minimize the chances of drawing this, but I have got to tell you, I've really loved drawing. Uh, I've really loved drawing uh, Gazelle every single game in twenty. By which that I mean, uh, I'm either drawing Circle, Mining, or Gazelle, or hard drawing uh, Gazelle. So like, I really like twenty cards. Um, but you can go over twenty to minimize your chances of drawing the field spell. Three copies of Salaman Great Circle, our Limit 3 uh, card. Three copies of Sign at Mining, another good consistency piece. Uh, these 16 cards, 17 cards rather, are probably optimal. Again, you can probably swap out one of these for a Limit 3 card. I mean, IDP is crazy, obviously. Um, Lancia also goes hard, but uh, I've decided to maximize our consistency leaving us with three tech spots because this deck doesn't always go first. Uh, I've decided to play Book of Moon. Although there are probably better going uh, second cards these days. I'm considering possibly playing Didi Crow. Um, 
just because I don't want to uh, lose to Tinny going uh, second or BLS going second or first, being able to banish the uh, ritual spell from their graveyard is nice, but obviously they just get to uh, recycle it later. So DD Crow is a bit iffy, but that is something else I would consider playing. Book of Moon is just so uh, much more versatile than something like a Warning Point. Uh, that I would rather play it over it. Uh, you can also play something like a Forbidden Chalice, but a lot of the monsters that your opponent is ending on as far as Link monsters these days are effectless Tiny monsters. So uh, Chalice wouldn't really do too much. On to the extra deck, we are playing very similar ratios, but we have changed our skill, so we're no longer on two Sunlight Wolf, but rather one Sunlight, one Heat Leo, and two Bay Links. This is the absolute minimum Salaman Great Names you can be playing. Uh, the rest of our links are removal and uh, OTK enablers, one copy of Security Dragon, one copy of Update Jammer, and one copy of Ningirsu, the World Chalice Warrior. We're playing Ningirsu instead of Raster Liger because I value non-targeting removal in this format, uh, especially because Tinyi is so good. And uh, and the, as far as decks that aren't tiered but still common on ladder, I really don't want to be destroying the Dark Magicians uh, with card effects if I can help it. Uh, and you don't always get to make Security Dragon into Update Jammer because uh, Jack Jaguar requires itself to be summoned to a Salaman Great Link Point. Sometimes you got to make Sunlight Wolf instead of uh, another monster. Although, worth mentioning, you can make Security Dragon in the EMZ, uh, Update Jammer below it, activate Security Dragon, and then make Ningirsu. So that is a way to get two forms of removal. And it does come up for OTKs. You will do something like you'll link off for a Bay Lynx, shuffle back what you linked off for Bay Lynx with Jack Jaguar, summon Jack below the Bay Lynx, link summon for Security Dragon, and use two other pieces of material uh, on your field to make Update Jammer, activate Security Dragon, and then make Ningirsu uh, for double attacking and sending something like the Field Spell or a set back row. Also, since this does come up, I will mention it. If you activate Ningirsu and then chain Salaman Great Circle, you can send the resolved circle face up from your field to the graveyard, so you don't have to do something like sending away your one copy of the field spell. The last card in our extra deck is the mandatory going first piece, Abyss Dweller. Because this deck is so hard in on salad names for consistency, uh, frequently you are going to just make a Sunlight Wolf protecting itself, um, Abyss Dweller, and a set copy of Salaman Great Circle, with a gazelle in hand, so you're not always going to be able to rely on Book of Moon uh, going first, but Abyss Dweller hits Tinyi very hard. It kind of is annoying for um, BLS. It is useful against Rockets, and of course, it dominates the Mirror Match. So with all that being said, let's take you to some games on ladder and see how this deck performs a year after its release. Alrighty, folks, game number one here, going to be up against a Yami Yugi on Dark Magician. Please excuse the pause screen. Uh, I actually forgot to turn character lines off again, and I didn't feel like reloading the replay. So you're going to have to sit through uh, this pause screen while I tell you that we're playing against Dark Magician, uh, Yami Yugi on Dark Magician. Did you know we're playing against Dark Magician and our opponent is Yami Yugi? I bet you didn't. All right, let's see what they can do here. This is going to be a very weird uh, game there, of course, on Magician's Magic. Normal Summon DM, I have Tamias, of course, into Dark Cavalry. Now, you might be asking why I'm showing uh, you this match. Well, it's because I wanted to showcase uh, the ability of this deck to play through uh, targeting protected monsters, but sort of how the deck has to go through a lot of hoops to do that. We're going to be uh, going through many different steps in order to basically make an Ingearsu plus update jammer. So we're going to activate the effect of Falco to set circle. Uh, the idea being we can send circle uh, to... Um, attack twice with Ningirsu. We're going to summon Update Jammer, activate the field spell, link off for Ningirsu, activate Ningirsu's mandatory effect, activate Update Jammer to chain block, very funny, set a card, activate Burning War, send the field spell and the Dark Cavalry, and attack twice. Easy way to get lethal, but kind of a lot of steps to go through. Game number two here, going to be up against a Joey Wheeler on, what is it called, Gear Freed Phoenix Blaster Turbo. Uh, 30 cards, wonderful, 7 card extra deck, you already know it's going to be a peak gaming experience. We're going to add Gazelle to our hand off of Salaman Great Circle, going to activate Sign at Mining to discard uh, Jack Jaguar for the debug, triggering Gazelle's effect in hand, going to send a Falco, activate Falco to set the circle, normal summon Lady Debug to add the Mirror to our hand, Mirror's effect will activate to summon itself to the field, going to Link Summon a copy of Salaman Great Bailings, add the Field Spell to our hand, 
We're going to keep it in hand, potentially to set um, to send with Ningirsu. This is why I like Falco because we can send uh, the, we can set the uh, quick play spell without needing to uh, reincarnation summon Sunlight Wolf. It's just something I've been trying with this deck, and it's worked out pretty well for me so far. Uh, Sunlight Wolf into Jack Jaguar to return the Gazelle set Book of Moon and of course uh, overlay for Abyss Dweller. This is a pretty good opening board. This is ideally what we're going for. Uh, Sunlight Wolf Dweller. Uh, Book of Moon is an extra, and uh, also Salaman Great Circle. Normally, we're ending on these three cards going first. They're going to uh, draw. We're going to activate Abyss Dweller immediately. They're going to Noble Knight Brothers. Did I say Gear Feed Turbo? I meant Noble Knights. I don't pay attention to my own replays, folks. They're going to uh, summon to our zone. We're going to add Falco back to our hand. We're going to make Custon in. Custon in would be a very good card here, but of course, we have Book of Moon, and uh, they have Galatin, which will allow them to attack into our Fella, and uh, we will protect, activate Circle at the end phase. Then we will summon Mir from our hand to uh, hopefully go off next turn. We are going to normal summon Falco, link summon for a copy of Security Dragon so we don't trigger the effect of that uh, Xyz monster, activate Gazelle in hand, uh, and uh, Sunlight Wolf as well. Sunlight Wolf will add back Mir to our hand. We're going to activate the effect of Gazelle to send Foxy, going to Security Dragon, activate Falco to return Gazelle to our hand. Link summon off for Ningirsu, the World Chalice Warrior. Activate the effect of Ningirsu. Uh, activate the effect of Ningirsu again. Chain Salman Great Circle like I was talking about to add Foul to our hand. Then send the Resolved Circle and their Noble Knight Brothers. Activate Foxy. Blow up their field spell and we have more than enough damage to kill them. Next game on our list going to be an Absolute Bleeder versus a Reginald Shark Castle on not Water Exceeds, but Ice Barrier of all things. This was a real slobber knocker of a match, folks. We opened three total copies of Gazelle, and by that I mean two. Uh, sign up Mining and Circle. They're going to activate a Prisma Medallion to get Revealer, discard whatever the fuck that card's called. Special Summon the Fox, make a token. Uh, Link Summon Coral Anemone. Activate Coral Anemone to revive Blizzed. Set two and pass. So this is an attacking Floodgate, a Tribute Summon Floodgate, and the only cards that matter are the two back row. Let's see if we can't play through it. Oh, we drew our third way to access Gazelle. Actually, Gazelle itself. So we're going to activate the circle to search Jack Jaguar because we will be discarding that off of Sinet Mining for a copy of Debug. Since we can get Gazelle out of our hand, we don't need to use a normal summon on a salad card, meaning we can plus ourselves with Debug. This is going to be a bit interesting because uh, if we normal summon Debug now, our zones will be clogged. So it'll be kind of weird to add the copy of Mir. I normal summon anyway to get Foxy because I want to play through back row. We're going to discard that Foxy off of um, Foul. For some reason, they decide to... To, uh, bounce our debug so we can normal summon again next turn uh, because I don't think even if we don't kill our opponent here I don't think they'll be able to kill me uh, we're going to activate the Falco in our graveyard they're going to compulse the thing we target which is uh, totally fine that's gazelle back in our hand again we can activate the effect of Veilings because we still have a Salaman Great on field and we've played through their whole back row. We're going to put Foul back in our deck. I totally forgot this deck had access to Gradle Dragon, even though back when I played Gishki, that was basically all you did. Uh, so I should have made a second Veilings, but I really wanted to leave the Sanctuary in hand uh, for um, Ningirsu. By destroying my monsters with card effects, we get to send Foul to the graveyard. The Coral Anemone bring back Blizzed. They have the literal best top deck in the game, the Ice Barrier Monster Reborn. To revive uh, Revealer, that'll uh, give them a Floodgate. We can't let them do that, so we're going to protect with Balinx, and uh, they will destroy our Gazelle, but that's totally fine. We've got another really good uh, access point here for uh, our Salamangrates. We're not going to search uh, Mir because we can add Mir here. Mir will special summon itself. That will allow us to get Foul out of our hand. Going to link off for Balinx number one. Then we're going to, or rather number two, we're going to link off for Sunlight Wolf. I, I spent a long time thinking here because there's just a bunch of different ways we can try to get lethal. Uh, Sunlight Wolf's going to add back the Gazelle because I don't think we're going to actually be able to kill them through all these monsters. Return Foul for next turn. Make a copy of Update Jammer. Make a copy of Ningirsu the World Child's Warrior. Activate the effect of Ningirsu. Activate the effect of Update Jammer. Set our field spell, send it, and Gravy Dragon. Activate Burning Roar. Get over the Link Monster and get over the Set Defender. Let's see what they draw for turn. They draw the uh, level four that summons itself, Territory of the Sharks, to make number 37, Hope Woven Dragon Spider Shark, the Aromage Ace Monster, not activating the effect for some reason. Um, we're going to draw Sinet Mining. Easy money, folks. We're going to get Debug. 
uh, normal summon or activate the effect to special summon Gazelle. Gazelle will send Foul. What I should have done was uh, debug for... Actually, no, it didn't matter because debug can't search Foul. Ignore me. We're going to special summon Mir. We're going to make a copy of Salman Great Sunlight Wolf. We're going to activate the effect of Jack Jaguar to shuffle back the second Sunlight Wolf. Activate Sunlight Wolf 2. Add Gazelle uh, to our hand. Then we will make Security Dragon. Activate the effect of Security Dragon to return that monster. Activate a Burning Roar for just 100 points off lethal. We'll see what they top deck. Uh, please don't be anything good. It's the fucking Rota. You gotta be kidding me. This man cannot fade a top deck to save his life. And uh, they can't get anything worth playing, and they lose. Okay, folks, it is meta match time. We are going to be playing against a Yami Yugi on alleged best deck of the format, Black Luster Soldier. I mean, I know the skill's broken, but the deck itself is dog shit, folks. We just got to acknowledge the facts here. They're going to activate their skill. We're going to activate ours. Double Book of Moon must be nice. They're going to Normal Summon and Dimmy on the Magistus of Mastery, the new Normal Summon of choice for this deck to potentially draw them into back row because the best card in Black Luster Soldier is the Compulsory Evacuation Device. We are going to let them destroy that card, draw and bottom the Endymion. Special Summon Black Luster Soldier, activate the Soul of Light and Deez Nuts. Uh, send those uh, banished cards back to the graveyard, set a card and pass. We are going to draw Salman Great Circle, going to activate the effect of uh, Debug to search Gazelle, activate the effect of Circle to search Mir. Mir is going to summon itself, then we are going to link off for Salaman Great Bailings. Bailings is going to activate to search the field spell, triggering Foul in hand. And now I'm going to show you a trick with uh, the field spell, which is my preferred way to use it, since I haven't been reincarnation summoning this in this deck so much. We are going to activate the effect of Foul to restrict our opponent's ability to activate the uh, spell trap, forcing it out much earlier than they would prefer, which will allow us to uh, combo off much further than we otherwise would have. We're going to link summon Salaman Great Bailings again. That'll trigger Gazelle in our hand. Then we are going to send uh, Jack Jaguar. Link summon Sunlight Wolf. Worth mentioning, this is a uh, build of the deck in which I did not have Update Jammer. I suspect if I did have Update Jammer, uh, we probably won this match uh, nine ways uh, to Sunday. So we're going to activate uh, Jack Jaguar's effect, summon itself, add Gazelle back to our hand, and then instead of making uh, Update Jammer... We are going to make Sky Blaster Musketeer. No idea why I activated the effect um, Burning Roar before I summons Castell. Uh, I must have been infected with the BLS Brainworms and also forgot to read my own cards and abilities. They're going to banish two cards for BLS. We're going to Book of Moon that motherfucker. Easy money. They're going to Soul Enlighten Darkness to add BLS, the vanilla one. Activate the effect of Super Soldier Ritual. Summon the vanilla BLS. Banish a Light and a Dark for a second copy of... Uh, Super BLS, whatever the fuck that card's called. We're going to add Foul back to our hand and Book of Moon the other one. Fuck you. We're going to protect our uh, Sunlight Wolf, and the priority's going to pass back to us, and we're going to kill our opponent into the sun. Drawing Circle for turn, it's just that easy, folks. Normal Summon Foxy, this is what I was talking about, a nice late-game Foxy to get, at the very least, another card we can discard off of Foul if our opponent had set a back row. We're going to excavate two copies of Foul, add the second one to our hand. And this is what I mean, even though we have multiple copies of Foul, it's not going to lose us the game because we're in such a commanding position. We're going to activate Sunlight Wolf, activate Gazelle, and summon Gazelle from our hand. Going to add a Foxy back to our hand for a normal summon next turn. Going to send Foul to the graveyard, activate Foul to set our card. Going to return that BLS to the hand, activate Ningirsu the World Chalice Warrior, activate Ningirsu to send our set card and one of their monsters, and our opponent goes home. Last game of the video against another meta match. We are on Salaman Great, of course, and our opponent is playing Tenyi. 20 versus 28 uh, versus 10. We once again open access to Gazelle, so we're just going to do that. Uh, not a super incredible hand, all things considered, but uh, we can see if we can make something happen here. Activate the second effect of Mir, discarding uh, Foul Falco to uh, special summon itself, triggering Gazelle to summon itself as well. Link summon off of Bailings, going to activate the effect of Bailings to add uh, the spell to hand. Going to return Gazelle to our hand. Then we're going to Normal Summon Gazelle. Very nice. This will allow us to get our Abyss Dweller combo online. Return the uh, Mirror so we can add it next turn. Then we're going to add Gazelle back to our hand. Not going to Reincarnation Summon, which probably was stupid. Maybe we do Reincarnation Summon. We do Reincarnation Summon for the first time in this video. This match was so long ago, I've forgotten how it even works. So we're going to Reincarnation Summon Sunlight Wolf, going to add the Circle back to our hand, and set it in pass. This will allow us to activate Circle on our opponent's turn, add Mir, Summon Mir to the Sunlight Wolf zone, and add back a normal Summon for next turn. They're going to activate Vishutta. Not anything we need to worry about. We're going to Book of Moon uh, their Tuner. They're going to Heavenly Dragon Circle. I lied. We were going to Book the Vishutta. Then they're going to add Adhara to their hand. 
uh, not a problem at all. They're going to link summon Monk of the Tenyi. We are out of interaction, but if they don't have a way to play through an Abyss Dweller, uh, we should be fine. Shaman of the Tenyi going to come out here, discarding Edhara to summon Monk. Then they got Berserker of the Tenyi coming out here. Then they have Vishuddha to banish to return our Sunlight Wolf. They're going to gain 1,800 and kick us in the teeth. We're going to activate Salaman Great Circle to add Foul since we no longer have the Link Monster. We're going to draw Lady Debug. It's just that easy, folks. Add Salaman Great Mirror to our hand and special summon that little boy. Then we will activate the effect of Foul to summon itself. Always a good monster to draw. Then we're going to Link Summon Salaman Great Bailings for no effect, triggering Gazelle to summon itself. Then we're going to send a Foxy for no real reason. Bounce Gazelle to our hand with Falco. This will allow us to discard Gazelle at a later junction. Um, if we need more link material, we're going to co-link to their Berserker and bounce it, summon Foxy, make another copy of Salaman Great Sunlight Wolf. This will allow our uh, Jack Jaguar to recycle the second one, add Gazelle back to our hand, and we've just got Lethal on the field. We're going to go for a Burning Roar and kick him in the dick with our uh, little Min. Exact Lethal, folks, through three effects. Can you can you believe it? Salaman Great is just the best deck, folks. I don't know what to tell you. So we're back with the deck, and oh man, did it feel good to win all five of our feature matches in this episode. Let's talk a little bit about what I did and did not like about this deck, beginning with what I didn't like because there's really only one thing. And that is, if you're going to execute the update jammer into Ningirsu line, you really need to make sure you're able to kill your opponent that turn. Because that line is so monster intensive, as update jammer requires monsters with levels, meaning you can't link off a Sunlight Wolf or Bailings for it, you're more often than not going to be ending your turn with nothing but a Ningirsu on your side of the field, and potentially a Gazelle and Fowl in hand. While that is nice, because Ningirsu is not a Salaman great name, it's going to be very hard for you to get your Gazelle and Fowl out of your hand in order to block attacks on your opponent's turn. Meaning if you're not able to kill with two direct Ningirsu attacks, your opponent will very easily be able to remove your own Ningirsu from the field, and potentially mount a come from behind victory. As for the positives, chief among them is the deck's consistency. Not only is nearly half the cards in this deck ways to access Gazelle or Gazelle itself, but basically every hand in the game nets you a Sunlight Wolf with protection plus Abyss Dweller going first. Occasionally you'll have high roll hands that set Book of Moon in addition to that, but in addition to Sunlight Wolf and Dweller, you're almost always going to be having a copy of Circle, meaning you can add a mirror to your hand, summon it to your Sunlight Wolf zone to add another normal summon for next turn. It's incredibly easy for you to get the priority pass back to you on turn 3 with a Gazelle and Foul in your hand for follow-up plays, making it easy to OTK thanks to the skill. Another thing I like about this deck is the fact that the scale isn't a pair of training wheels that pilots an otherwise incredibly mediocre series of cards. Salaman Great is an incredibly powerful deck on card quality alone, and the skill allows you to flex removal options because you don't need to play a raw copy of Sunlight Wolf and Heat Leo in addition to the ones you're already playing, meaning you can play Security Dragon and Ningirsu as you've seen. All in all, I think this deck is absolutely fantastic. It's my personal favorite deck to be piloting during this format, and I expect to be playing it for the foreseeable future until I begin this month's ladder climb with vampires. So that's that. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope it was informative or at the very least enjoyable. If you'd like to catch me play Duel Links Live, you can both follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash skepvtuber where I stream most of the time, but I've also started streaming live on YouTube on this very channel, so subscribe to this channel as well. I'd also appreciate it if you could like the video and leave a comment. Comments and likes are both incredibly good for the algorithm, and it might not seem like it, but I do put a lot of work into these dedicated long-form YouTube content, and I would really appreciate if anyone could help spread the word of it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the future, and I hope you are all doing well.